Hello traders, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to go into another quick educational video. This is just to reinforce concepts that I constantly talk about in my market analysis and in other videos on the channel. But it's just the concept of how we can drill down on our time frames in order to find more precise entries. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different types of entries when it comes to trading. I'm going to be talking mostly about just pullbacks into uh, supply and demand blocks when we're trying to go into a move with the trend. So what I mean by that is, you know, like if we have a market that is coming up and then we have a push up when we're coming back down into the last cluster of the last demand or area where buyers stepped in and market pushed up we shift market structure to the upside and now in this case we're looking to get back in on a retest here there's also usually a common gap here to fill in which is one of my favorite areas to target um, if you haven't done so make sure to check out on my description I have a a five-part free market structure trading course here on YouTube and this is one of the basic setups that I talk about there just the pullback into a um, demand or supply order block uh, area okay so what I'm going to talk about today is how when we have market pulling back into this areas where market just took off here and we're looking to get in on a retrace back into this fill into this previous resistance that's now been broken and now we want it to be testing as support how we can use this cluster of candles this order block before price made an impulsive move how we can go and drill into lower time frames in order to make our entry more precise and also it'll help us to make our risk more tight as well you can have a tighter stop loss now obviously the tighter your stop loss is the more risk you have of getting stopped out on the trade and pro it could possibly even go back your way so you know you just got to find a balance test it out with your own strategy and see what kind of parameters or how much room you want to be giving your trades and also depending what type of trader you are is going to vary what time frames you use because obviously if you're a swing trader you probably don't want to be going down into anything below like the one hour time frame because if you look into like a 15 minute or a five minute chart it's just going to be very noisy for the type of trading that you are doing and you know you're just going to be getting in all chopped up if you're trying to look for any any uh, reactions on like a five minute time frame if you're if you're you know trying to take a trade that you're going to hold for several days etc so in general the if i'm looking to do day trading meaning holding trades no longer than just for the day's session or most likely you know just quick trades like i usually take in the s p 500 futures which are trades that i hold for a few minutes or maybe up to a couple of hours then I'll usually use a one hour time frame as sort of my more uh, big macro uh, time frame for trend analysis and then I'll drill down into like a five minute chart to look for more precise entries if I'm looking to swing trade then I'll probably be looking at the daily chart and I'm going to drill down at the one hour chart the lowest in order to uh, look for my more precise entry triggers. Okay, so I'm just going to show you three quick examples of what I mean and how you can look to use this concept and the importance of drilling down into lower time frames. So here we have a chart of the euro US dollar. This is a four hour chart and you can see we were on a downtrend 
then market started coming up here and then right here we had this big impulsive move we left this gap here and now we have this very clear uh, order block here and we identify it simply as the last cluster of candles the last candle or cluster of uh, overlapping candles to the downside that led or were the precursor of this impulsive move up obviously when we broke out here we broke this swing high so hence we were making a new higher high and so you can see the trend is still intact so if market is going to then come back down where we made a higher low here and a higher high so we did actually in this case we broke to the downside the intermediate uh uh, trend on the lower time frames however this is a good area now for me in order to look for a uh, long maybe even just a short term long at least into this level pretty much we have a very clear support level that was broken let me zoom in actually just so we can see this in more detail but you can see right there you know this is a very clear support level that we broke so this is my immediate target so if we're coming back down into this uh bullish demand block here then i could be looking for a long right into here my stop would go immediately right below this so in this case you know you can see the risk reward in this trade is not that great because if we get in here and we know that this is our first trouble area right here and our stop is here this is almost like a one-to-one -one risk reward which is not very good but I can look to refine this on a lower time frame and see if I could get in on a much tighter trade in order to then see if I could get a better risk reward on this so let's just mark this off here let's say this is going to be our target level right there and so if we go into a one hour chart and I zoom out you can see that this was the original order block we had on the four hour but now that we refined it into the one hour we can see that on the one hour time frame the breakout started from this point right here we had two hourly candles that made a down move and then just a huge push up here and then we broke this high and made a new higher high etc on this uh on the last the higher time frame there so if we look at this now we can now look for an entry further down instead of here we can now look to enter right here which you can see in this case was a very nice precise touch and our stop loss instead of having it underneath here we can now have it here underneath this hourly candle right there and so if i grab my risk reward tool you can see that now that trade before on the four hour time frame that was barely a one to one this is now a 2.12 risk reward which again you know normally i like to take at least a three to one but you can see in this case you know a 2.12 is a a decent size risk reward and so you can see how now by drilling down into a lower time frame we're able to tighten up our risk and look for a more precise entry now obviously you know you don't want to get analysis paralysis meaning that you don't want to then just start drilling down into a half an hour a 15 minute a five minute because obviously you know you're not going to go down into a tiny time frame if in this case like i said i'm looking for more of a swing trade here that could take several days so in this case i usually like to just go down by a factor of one 
on the time frame. And by a factor of one, I usually mean that we go about like a four, like a four to six times lower. So if you're on a daily chart, then look down into like a four hour, maybe an hourly. If you're on like a one hour time frame, then you can don't go down into like a 50 minute or a five minute. If you're on a four hour, like I showed earlier, you could go down into a one hour, maybe even a half hour. Sometimes like you can see here, the difference between the half hour and the one hour is not really anything because on the half hour, this three red candles are all uh, overlapping so it's pretty much the same order block on the one hour as in the half hour so sometimes like I'm gonna show you on the later example too you know it doesn't really make a difference there here if we go into the futures on the Nasdaq you can see right here this is a one hour chart and we have the market come here and we made a very quick impulsive move down we broke this swing low this swing low so definitely market structure has shifted to the downside we've left this inefficient gap right here where price pretty much was just a one-way movement with no wicks or pullbacks into here so now we have this bearish supply zone the bearish order block whatever you want to call it this was the last cluster of three green candles that pushed up before this moved down. And you can see we pulled back. We had a nice retest here and then the market collapsed more. So in this case, we could have had a nice stop probably just above this highs right here. And in this case, first target back down. I would have probably gone right around this area right here. You can see we had some resistance here before we had this impulsive move. So this would have been a nice target right here. So could we have refined this entry more even though this is a pretty small order block? Also, if you have order blocks that are very wide, then those definitely are good to look to try to refine. If they're sort of pretty, you know, thin like this one, you might not be able to refine that much. But in this case, if we go down into the 15 minute chart, you can see this outer gray block was the one hour bearish order block here. And now if I zoom in more, we have this little cluster of 15 minute candles where this move originated from we broke down and broke this swing low here and then that started this whole down move there so you can see i marked off this 15 minute order block here and you can see we pull back right into the tick here and we could have had our risk right here so we could have had a much tighter entry here to go short now obviously you know I'm picking examples just to show you the concept here. This doesn't mean it works all the time, but you know, it is up to you to just go in and back test and see how this concept can be uh, utilized. And then finally, just gonna show you an example like I mentioned that sometimes even if you drill down, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Here we have a weekly chart on the uh, silver market. We have this supply block here, this cluster. We pull back down. We left this gap right here. Market just broke down below this swing low. We broke structure down. Then we have a nice pull back here. And this is one thing I like to see when I'm looking for entries to fade a pullback into a bearish or a bullish order block or supply demand zone. I like to see price make an impulsive move away and then come back nice and rounded because if we have like this and then a very quick spike back, this is called a V reversal 
and there's a lot of momentum coming back so the areas might not hold but if we have a nice rounded pullback then this ones have a much higher chance of rejecting and you can see here we had a nice rejection here we could have entered here with a stop right here and then as far as uh, targets well in this case I would have been targeting this lows right here because we made a macro lower high so I could have wanted to see a lower low which in this case you can see did not happen we we could have trailed the stop here but then if I go into a daily time frame and we go into the same block here you can see in this case all these daily candles were all interlocked as well just a bunch of daily over green overlap candles up into this entry right here so in this case even if we drill down from a weekly to a daily chart we cannot have refined this a whole lot more we can try here just out of curiosity if we go into a four hour chart you can see in this case on the four hour chart let me just zoom out so yeah no even in this chart it doesn't make that much of a difference because for me you know we do have this cluster up here with this gap and then we have this cluster and this cluster so it's just too many um you know different clusters broken down but let's say if we would have done just this four hour candle right here and we pull this all the way to the front yeah I mean you could see in this case this would have been a very precise entry here into this four hour block which if we pull back you can see it was this candle the up move before we broke down but again for me this doesn't look very clear I generally like to see just one candle or a group of candles up and an impulsive move with a very obvious gap down in this case this was you know down pull back down pull back it was not as clear over there but pretty much that is the concept so again just when I identify a nice impulse and move out I like to drill down into the last consolidation of cluster of candles and then we can drill down into lower time frames if we want to try to find a possible more precise entry to get into it again a pullback with trend on the macro trend in this case to the upside because obviously it's always better to go in with the trend okay that's pretty much it for the video thank you all for tuning in hope you're having a great week and i will see you all in the next one take care